Welcome back everyone, my name is Eric with Two Guys and a Cooler.com and we got a special episode for you today. We get a lot of requests each week to show how to make salami without the use of a special fermenting chamber or a special drying chamber. And under normal circumstances, that's not possible. But these are not normal circumstances. I reached out to a company by the name of Umai, who happens to sell a product that makes this a possibility. They not only sell a product, but they sell an entire kit that has everything you need if you want to make salami in your refrigerator. And so I thought it would be a cool video to make salami the way they recommend making it in your house fridge. And then for me to make salami with my drying chamber and fermentation chamber and mold. And then once they're totally done drying, pit those two products against each other to see whether it's even worth making salami in your refrigerator. Because look, if it's not amazing, delicious salami, don't even waste your money. Let's look at what's in the kit. First thing I notice is a pamphlet with a lot of detailed instructions and some great pictures. Umai has obviously spent a lot of time covering all the bases, making sure that you get this right at home. There's also a neat little pamphlet with some independent recipes for pepperoni, sopressata, finocchiona. That's kind of cool. We'll set that to the side. Next in the kit, Umai's included some zip ties and uh, there's also a bag of cure number two and that's gonna be for your salami. In addition to cure number two, there is a bag of dextrose, which is essential for feeding your starter culture. The casings that are included are made from a unique material that allow your salami to dry slowly in your refrigerator, cool. And then finally, we've got the starter culture that's gonna be used to ferment our salami. And the one that they chose was TSPX, which is a great choice for home producers of salami. It's a safe, reliable, consistent product. We'll talk more about that later. And then just out of sheer curiosity, I wanted to try some of their different spice blends. They had all kinds of blends like finocchiona, soppressata, pepperoni, chorizo, land Jaeger, metwurst. It was crazy. So I got one of each. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna share with you which one I like. But here's what we're gonna do for today's project. I'm gonna use my own recipe. Check the description box if you want that recipe. So the first thing we wanna do when making salami is grind our meat and our fat. Now it needs to be partially frozen. And depending on the texture you're going after and the marbling you're looking for, you can grind fine or coarse. You can grind your meat and fat together or meat and fat separate. It's completely up to you. Once we're done grinding, we're gonna pop that back in the freezer so it can cool down even more. And I'm gonna get my spices together and then I'm gonna get my starter culture together because it's almost time to mix. The starter culture is very easy with a half a cup of water, a quarter teaspoon of culture for every five pounds. We're gonna let that rehydrate for about 20 to 30 minutes. After it's rehydrated, we're gonna put our spices into our meat and that's just as simple as pouring it right on top. Once your spices are on your meat, you're gonna go ahead and pour your starter culture right on top of that. And then you can begin mixing. You can mix with your hands. And if you mix with your hands, you really wanna get after it. You're looking for really good protein extraction so that you can get good binding properties. Or you can use a stand mixer or a planetary mixer like I'm using right here, and that's gonna do the trick as well. What you're looking for is a complete texture change and your meat is gonna be incredibly tacky when you're done. After you've mixed your meat really good and it's super sticky, let's go ahead and stuff it. Now, one of the pieces of equipment that you're gonna to wanna to consider when making salami is a stuffer. It, you know, trying to use a KitchenAid uh, tends to heat up too much and it really messes with the texture of the meat. So I'm gonna be using my electric stuffer and we're gonna go ahead and put these casings directly on it. Notice I pre-cut the casings to the size of salami that I'm looking for. All we're gonna do now is tightly stuff that minced meat inside those special bags from Umai that are designed to sit inside of our refrigerator. And I did notice that pricking these particular bags is not recommended. It's actually not necessary. So once I have got those completely stuffed and tied off again, I'm gonna weigh my salami because I'm targeting about a 40% weight loss. The last step in making salami is fermenting it, and this is where it can get a little tricky, but TSPX, the starter culture we use, likes 65 Fahrenheit to 85 Fahrenheit, and notice that the temperature in my kitchen is 75.5 Fahrenheit. So you can basically ferment your salami using the starter culture that Umai provided at room temperature. You wanna to try to get a relatively high humidity when fermenting your salami so that it doesn't begin to dry out. And all I'm gonna do is pour a little bit of water inside of that pan that I'm using. Notice my salami's elevated a little bit. And then I'm gonna to continue to go ahead and close it off. Now this is gonna sit inside of my kitchen for anywhere between 48 to 72 hours undisturbed. And what's gonna happen is the color's gonna change, the smell is gonna change, the texture is gonna change. It's gonna be kind of amazing. Notice I'm just gonna take that, 
pop it into my oven. The light is not on. The temperature in my kitchen is relatively cool and it's gonna sit there. Now, this is my fermentation chamber that has controlled temperature, controlled humidity, and uh, I'm gonna hang the salami that I made uh, using my recipe inside that. And now we're gonna wait 50 hours later. After 50 hours, you're gonna notice the color is more vibrant, check that out. The texture is more firm and the odor actually smells very pleasantly fermented. And when all of those things happen, and it's usually between 50 to 60 hours with TSPX, I'm gonna go ahead and transfer my salami into my drying chamber where I have controlled temperature, controlled humidity, and that's what that's gonna look like. So there's my finocchiona using traditional methods of making salami. And now let me check on the salami that is using the Umai dry bag that's in my oven. Same exact amount of time, nothing's changed. And look at the color, nice, beautiful reddish color. The texture is firmed up quite a bit and it does smell nice and fermented. If you do have a way to check the pH, you're targeting 5.0 to 5.3. This is a great little pin by Thermaworks. It checks the humidity and the temperature. It's relatively inexpensive and it's kind of a cool thing to have if you're gonna be making salami. So now that my salami is done fermenting, I'm just gonna take that as they recommend and stick it in my refrigerator. Now the kind of racks that I have on my refrigerator allow for airflow on the top and bottom. If you don't have racks like that, just put it on a grating and wait. Now in this case, we're gonna wait until we lose 40% weight loss. Now that's gonna be our target. And this is what it's gonna look like after that amount of time. Notice how my salami's shrunk a little bit. It's a lot more firm than when I first put it in there. And it smells amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that out cut into it, slice it up really good, and then go grab the salami that we've got drying outside and compare the two to see how they taste. So as of this point right now, everything looks great. The color inside the salami looks nice. It dried evenly. There's no dry ring. There's no mold on the salami. It's nice and firm. And yeah, as of right now, this looks like a typical salami. I, I am noticing a little bit of oxidation on the outside of the salami, but that's not that big a deal. As I slice it up, it slices up great, no problem. So let's go ahead and look at the one outside. Here's the Finocchiona covered in Penicillium Nalgia Vinci. It's definitely got that funky quality to it that most traditional salamis are gonna have. And as we slice this up, let's go ahead and see what it looks like on the inside. And this salami smells great. Beautiful color, dried evenly, nice and firm. And as we go ahead and pop this on the slicer, it slices great as well. So as far as the comparison goes, both of these are looking pretty good. Remember, I'm using the exact same ingredients in both of these salamis as we're using my finocchiona recipe. But at the end of the video, I'll share with you what their spice blends look like and how they tasted. But as an overall comparison, this is what the salamis look like. One dried traditionally and the other one dried in the refrigerator. Let's look at the one dried traditionally first. Now, right off the bat, I can tell you that the color is a little more vibrant. It does have a slightly funkier smell to it, like a cheesier smell. The texture is really great. And let me go ahead and give it a quick little taste. Amazing. This is such a great recipe. Highly recommend you try it. Now, let me go ahead and taste theirs and I'll give you a synopsis here in a minute. Um, the outside of the salami is a little oxidized, but when you slice it, you really can't tell. The color looks great. The texture is nice and firm. There's no dry ring, which is such a frustrating element to making salami in a drying chamber if you don't get the conditions right. And as I taste this one, really good, surprisingly. Like I honestly didn't think I was gonna like it. Uh, the traditional one has a more of a fermented flavor to it as the bacteria probably had a chance to continue working in the elevated temperatures of the drying chamber. But in the refrigerator, this thing dried beautifully. It's, got a, it's actually got a more firm texture than the one dried uh, traditionally. It's a little bit milder, which that's okay. There was no mold growth whatsoever. So if you don't like that Penicillium Nalgiavinci flavor or if you're allergic to it, this is actually a really good option. So here's the million dollar question. Is it worth making salami in your refrigerator using a kit from Umai? And I could tell you from this project, and we made eight different varieties of salami. And surprisingly, 
they all came out incredibly delicious. Albeit a little bit milder, the one thing that I noticed was that the typical problems associated with making salami in a chamber, I didn't experience making it in my refrigerator. I didn't have dry ring, I didn't have mold issues, and that's really great. And so if you're just getting started and you wanna make salami at home and you can't afford a drying chamber or anything like that, this is quite possibly the best option uh, to see whether or not it's something you want to get into. These are the different salamis that I made using the spice blends from Umai. And I got to be honest, I don't know who's doing their, their spice mixes, but whoever's doing their spice mixes absolutely nails it. My favorite one was the Land Jaeger. It's got a nice smoky element to it. Well balanced, doesn't overpower the pork and was just so tasty. As you can see, all of these salamis came out amazing using the Umai process. Now, am I gonna switch over to the bags? Probably not. I do tend to like a more moldy, funky, fermented style of flavor from my salami. I also like the traditional process, but if you're just getting started, I totally recommend these, and uh, I think that you're gonna have success right out of the shoot. Let's take a minute to thank the patrons of the channel. If you like what we do and you wanna support our work, visit our Patreon page in the description box below. And that's how we made salami in a home refrigerator. Thanks for watching. If you got any questions or if you decide to try it yourself, leave me a comment in the comment section below. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. We post new videos each week. We'll see you in the next one.